In this problem, we have a rotating rectangular plate, and we're asked to find the difference in kinetic energy um, between when it's rotating about a center of gravity compared to when it's rotating about a point P, which is a distance D away from the center of gravity, rotating at the same angular frequency of three radians per second. So in this case, we're just gonna split it off into two different scenarios um, and calculate the energies, uh, the kinetic energies, and then um, subtract the two to find the difference in kinetic energy. So uh, we're gonna look at first the case about which it's spinning about the center of gravity. So case one is spinning about G, okay? So about G, uh, we know that the kinetic energy or also known as Tg is gonna be equal to um, one half ig omega squared. Okay, so we need to find what ig is. So ig is essentially the um, i for um, plate, which is given by the dimensions ab about g, which for a uh, um, plate like this is given by um, the following formula. Uh, 1 12th m times a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if we actually plug in values into this equation, we get that 1 12th times the mass, which is 14 kilograms, um, times um, 4 meters squared plus um, 6 point, or 3 meters squared. Um, gives us, um, we can plug this in and it gives us that Ig is equal to um, 29.2 kilograms meters squared. Then we can plug this Ig into this equation to solve for Tg. We know omega, so we can solve for Tg. Tg is equal to one half times 29.2 kilograms meters squared times three radians per second and all squared. And Tg is 131.25 joules. Okay, so this is case number one. So spinning about G. Case number two is um, spinning about P. So um, in this case, we still have um, the energy, so Tp being equal to one half um, Ip omega squared, okay? But Ip is different than Ig, so um, this is I about G, this here is I about this point P. So everything's spinning about this fixed point P. So we have to calculate IP. Now, how do we do that? Well, we just use parallel axis theorem. So we already have IG, and then we are gonna add that parallel axis term to move um, away from G to a point P. So um, IP, is going to be equal to the same thing we had before for Ig, so 1 12th uh, m a squared plus b squared plus parallel axis term which is m d squared where this d here is this distance here called d on the diagram to so the distance between g and p. Okay and that extra term um, is the parallel axis term. So if we plug everything in, we get the following. Um, 1 over 12 times 14 kilograms times 4 meters squared plus 3 meters squared plus 14 kilograms times 6.5 meters squared. Okay, and so IP is equal to um, 1862 divided by 
three kilograms meters squared, which is also equal to sixty two point six to zero point seven kilograms meters squared. Okay, now we can again do the same thing we did before, take this number here, which is IP, plug it into here, we know omega, so we can actually find TP. So TP is going to be equal to one half times IP, which is 620.7 kilograms meters squared times five radians per second squared and this yields 2793 joules okay this is much much more kinetic energy than spinning about the center of gravity okay so now if we want to find delta t it's going to be equal to tp minus tg the absolute value of it because we don't really care about the sign. Um, so if we do this, we're going to get um, 2793 joules minus uh, 131.25 um, joules, which equals to, and this is the absolute value of it, which equals to 2661 um, joules. And that's our delta T or our difference in kinetic energy between the two cases.